Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video myself, Amata. Hope you all had a lovely Valentine's Day if you do happen to celebrate it. I know not everyone does, I don't myself. Anywho, let's move swiftly on into the last 24 hours or so of tech news, shall we? And we are going to kick things off with yet more from the GTX 1660 tie. As we have yet another, not really leak, leak isn't really the right word, we've got some information, the first look at the 1660 tie from MSI, thanks to videocards.com. Now what we have from MSI is there's two Ventus models coming for the tie version of the card at least. We've got the XS and the non-XS. And the XS version has the same PCB with the 1660 Ti Gaming X, which is a V plus 2 design, as video cards themselves do note. In terms of the specs, well, we see a TU116400 GPU, which has 1536 CUDA cores and 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory. And we are going to be seeing this release on February 22nd, and we're probably going to be seeing a non tie variation in March. Now, you have undoubtedly been enjoying the picture of the silicon itself, and you'll notice that it's quite a bit smaller than the TU-106 silicon, which pretty much confirms, yep, it is not based on the silicon as people have been speculating. So, for the moment at least, it seems ASUS are going to be the only ones doing, at least so far, a variant of the card with different memory configurations between 6 and 3 gigabytes. There was a leak yesterday, check out my video if, if you haven't seen it already, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I discuss everything there in that particular video. So I am going to be very, very interested to see how this does in performance. Of course, we've had a couple of leaks here and there, but they are by no means complete the picture when it comes to the 1660 tie, and of course there is a non-tie variant to consider as well. So fingers crossed we can get our hands on a sample, but even if not, I'll be curious to see exactly what goes on when it comes to this game in benchmarks. Obviously there is more to a GPU than just raw CUDA cores. We've also got all the architecture improvements of Turing, even though we did get a confirmation the other day that this particular GPU is not going to have ray tracing. There is all the other improvements that came in the Turing architecture to consider as well. But we're going to move over from NVIDIA to their arch nemesis AMD. And what we have on this particular topic today is that we have the very first notebooks that are based on the Ryzen 3000 series lineup, which of course we saw debuted at CES 2019. Now we have six SKUs for Ryzen, two A series SKUs and a single Athlon SKU available in this particular lineup. And now we have the first notebooks from ASUS, the tough gaming notebooks, which are again based on Ryzen 3000. We have various models and both the FX705 and FX505 feature the Ryzen 5 3550H processor, which is a quad core with 8 threads clocked at 2.1 GHz base and 3.7 GHz of boost. And just a bit of a refresher for you, we see 4 megs of L3 cache, 2 megs of L2. Well, for graphics, it has the Vega 8 GPU, which has 512 stream processors and is clocked at 1200 MHz. And this is all at a TDP of 35 watts, which is pretty damn nice. So at the moment, at least, we do not see any of the Ryzen 7s being utilised. We see two Ryzen 5 models, as I said. We're most likely going to have to wait and see for any particular laptops or notebooks or whatever that utilise Ryzen 7. But again, we do see a quite a nice couple of machines being on offer here from ASUS. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from ASUS about not only Ryzen but the tough gaming laptops as well which reads quote AMD's Ryzen processors have taken desktop by storm and tough gaming laptops lead the deployment of the newest version otherwise known as Picasso this second gen Ryzen mobile APU is built with industry leading 12nm technology. The Ryzen 5 3550H powering FX505DY and FX705DY boast four cores, eight threads that deliver capable performance for popular games and everyday work. Multi threaded performance is particularly strong, yet the processor fits into a 35 watt power envelope that doesn't compromise battery life. Vega-based integrated graphics allow the APU to power the laptop all on its own, which helps conserve power and extend battery life to over 7 hours of 1080p video, pay video playback 
on the 705 model and 6 hours on the FX505. We do also see a discrete graphics card being put into play here on this particular laptop, and of course this is out of quote now, as we see a Radeon FRX 560X, and basically switch from the Vega 8 that I already mentioned to this discrete GPU when you are actually looking to do a little bit of gaming, which of course is very much the sort of market this is being well, marketed to, given the fact that this is part of the gaming lineup. Of course, this is the mobile end of Ryzen, but it still all looks pretty tasty, to be honest, and I'd be really curious to see the sort of performance numbers that we are going to be getting from not only this particular series of laptops, but other uh, mobile series as well, and of course the desktop variants, and I'm really curious to see what is going on with Ryzen 7 on both ends of the market as well. But speaking of processors, we also have another arch rival, this time of AMDs entering the ring, and of course it is none other than Intel. So, we of course learned a lot about Intel's Gen 11 graphics architecture at their architecture day. Of course, we learned all about Ice Lake at CES 2019, which makes use of the Sunny Cove architecture, which again was detailed at their architecture day. And we learned a little bit more about Intel XE, which of course is the proper name for Intel's Arctic Sound. And it seems we have yet more info ahead of us, as on the GDC schedule for this year, we do see Intel hosting a architecture of Intel processors graphics gen 11 so we are most likely going to be getting some repeat information that we've already seen at the architecture day I wouldn't really be surprised to see that but hopefully we can learn even more about what we have in store perhaps some early performance numbers that would be nice but Regardless of the specifics, we are definitely going to get a deeper look than we already did at this particular processor graphics. Obviously, this is regarding the architecture rather than the Intel XE specifically. So even this is obviously a GDC, which is a game developers conference. That is literally the name. I wouldn't, see, I wouldn't expect to see too many performance numbers, but it would be nice to get just a teaser, a taste. But, you know, even if we just learn more about it... That would also be nice. So we're going to end things out on, unfortunately, a bit of a sour note again today with Activision Blizzard. Now, you might have seen this topic during the rounds. I wouldn't be surprised because for a lot of people, it's left a bad taste in their mouths. And it had with mine as well as just after they announced record profits, Activision Blizzard laid off nearly 800 people. Now, this topic is a bit of a difficult one for me because I really have to struggle not to just go on off a huge rant because, well, anyone who's been watching the channel for a while knows how I feel about this topic. I did a video back in October of last year, not even last year, sorry, 2017, There's going to be linked in the description below this video, where I talked about what I feel is their really massive budget problem, how their budgets are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they just can't seem to trim the fat and you don't I argue that you don't need these huge budgets to produce the games that we do but again that is all discussed in the video that I'll link below so the reason it's linked into this is because well as I said they produce produced record profits and yet laid off a huge amount of people they have done an eight percent reduction in headcount so even though they have announced record profits they still posted revenue that was lower than they expected and also recently they discussed the Destiny 2 not doing as well and obviously the fact that Destiny 2 has now gone with Bungie alongside them so yeah this is well again they did not as good as they expected it's still the greatest profits in their history as a company and yet oh, oh cut 8% of workforce 800 people without a job oh, okay that's fine so net revenue of 2.38 billion dollars for the year and the statement here from ceo bobby kotick says quote well our financial results for 2018 were the best in our history we didn't realize our full potential so this is again is lining up with the insane expectations that some AAA developers seem to have like when you've got a game selling millions and millions of copies like battlefield 5 the other day with with ea um how it sold like 7 million copies, but that just wasn't good enough, and this kind of lines up with that. Like, they have literally made record profits, and yet, because it didn't match up to their insane expectations, they're going to get rid of 800 people's jobs, basically. And we have seen the layoffs hit across all Activision Blizzard subsidiaries, including Activision itself, Blizzard, and of course, King. But apparently, this is going to be focused on non development departments, and well, I have nothing against a company trimming the fact I literally just said that, but this just seems very like. I don't, I don't even know how I have the, have the words to, to just actually 
express my disgust with this because it just really seems tasteless to be like, oh yeah, we've made more money than we've ever made in our literal history, uh, but because it wasn't quite, you know, the insane Scrooge McDuck level of riches we were expecting, we're just going to fire a bunch of people. Yeah, that seems good. That way I can still have my massive bonus this year, even though revenue was lower than expected, even though we still did really, really well. It's not even like they had disappointing results in terms of they did poorly. If they did poorly, I might understand. Like, they did way lower than they expected. But no, this is literally more money than they've ever made, ever. But it's not good enough. And to be honest with you, I could do a whole video just on this problem. And I think I might do. Because despite the fact that I was trying really hard to rant, I've just spent the last two minutes doing just that. So yeah, Activision Blizzard have had a bit of an rough time in terms of their expectations and obviously Destiny 2 has failed to meet expectations and obviously Bungie took the IP and took themselves along with it and obviously there was the whole Diablo Immortal debacle but that doesn't change the raw facts of you've literally made more money than you've ever made. I know I keep repeating that point but I just genuinely am like Blizzard what happened to you? Like genuinely what happened? <laughs> I just don't understand. Anywho, I think I'm going to call it there because I could literally just rant about this all day, apparently. So, you might be able to expect a video from me on this topic, but um, if you want to see me discuss a similar topic, again, it's going to be linked in the description below this video, so go check it out if you'd be so inclined. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.